everybody, my name is Julian of Flow Graphics and welcome to another episode of Game Dev Diaries. This is a rather uh, interesting episode. As you can see, the game is a lot different. Uh, I won't be talking too much about everything that I've uh, updated and all the visuals and all that. I'm going to be talking about what you can see in the character's hands uh, and uh, well, arms and back, I guess, uh, is weapons. Weapons, weapons and tools and shields and all sorts of stuff. So I've made a total of 50 weapons and shields in the process of about, about a week and I recorded making all of it. Uh, so you can see me from start to finish make every single one of these weapons that you can see on the screen right now, like every single one. Uh, it took about 12 hours, the recording itself is about 12 hours, it took around 20 hours to make all of these. So uh, yeah, look, it was, it was pretty rough, it took a long time, uh, but you know, you do what you can. Um, I, I just, I thought it'd be a fun video to actually explain my whole process for 3D modeling and how my whole sort of workflow works and you guys can see me make all this sort of stuff from start to finish. I thought it be, could be pretty cool. So look, let's just get straight into it. As you can see, uh, it's, it's going to be pretty sped up because it's, it's 12 hours of footage. Uh, so I'm going to be going through pretty quick on the screen and I'll basically just be talking through what I'm doing. Uh, and you can see I've already sort of put stuff into the game and that's what's really important for me for making any sort of 3D stuff. It's having a super easy workflow. So one of the things that makes your workflow really quick and easy for importing assets into games and quickly seeing what they look like, uh, one thing is, is called texture packing or, or um, sort of Sprite Atlas. Uh, so basically what this is, and you'll see it pop up on the screen every so often, is these textures. You can see right here and you're thinking, what the hell are these? So this right here is the one texture. These are the different maps, uh, but this one texture that you can see on the screen here uh, actually is the exact same texture for all of the weapons in the game as well as a whole bunch of items and things so there's probably I don't know probably a hundred different objects that all share this one texture so whenever the game loads and all these objects go on the scene and then they go oh, okay I'm a 3d model uh, what's the texture what color am I um, they all go to the exact same file and what this called what this is called is draw calls so when you have a game there's these things called draw calls. So every time you have an asset, let's say it's a 2D, 3D, it doesn't matter what it is. If it's a 2D asset and it's a sprite, um, it's got some sort of texture. So if you draw a little person, Photoshop, and save it as a PNG, uh, that's your that's your image, that's your texture for your sprite. Uh, and then you drag that in your game and you've got your, like, your little sprite man. <laughs> and every time you see that in the game, uh, the game has to go into the files, find the, the man.png, uh, and draw it and take it from the files and then put it on your screen and that's got a draw call so you want to try and reduce them as much as possible because it takes up uh, a lot of memory a lot of processing so instead of having a hundred different textures for every single different weapon and item they all share the exact same uh, texture uh, sort of page so it's just one uh, 2k by 2k texture and it's got all the single, all the weapons, everything on it. So the way it works is the sort of the top row that you can see here, uh, they're all sort of the metals. So we've got like the golds and the bronzes and all the metallic silvers. Uh, and then we have all of our colors for wood and just cloth and just random sort of colors. And I've got some other sort of textures around the corners as well for other parts of the game and other building parts like all of the base and um, tiles and wood planks and other stuff like that. So pretty much everything, when you can see me jump into the game and I've got like my little character running around with all of the, um, the, the building props around me, pretty much everything you can see there besides the trees is the exact same texture. I know it's hard to believe, but that's how awesome sort of texture packing can be. You can have tons and tons of different models and then just have one texture and you just sort of need to make those models in a sort of a smart way. And what makes it really, really easy to do this texture packing, it would be almost impossible to do it otherwise, is the sort of the style that I've chosen for all the items in the game. So the way I've sort of styled this game is all of this sort of the background elements. So the base and the terrain and the trees, you can see they're actually textured, like they have detail. There's dirt and there's, you know, lines in the wood and the rock has like a rough texture and stuff like that. Uh, and then all of the items that you sort of interact with and move around, they're just like that flat sort of low poly 2D, well not, not 2D, but they're sort of that flat shaded um, low poly. And it just works really, really easy because when uh, you have models, you have to unwrap those models. Um, it's a little bit confusing, but for example, when you're like a kid in school, uh, assuming all of you 
are in school or have been to school before, um, you'd make like a like a paper cube and then you'd make sort of like a cross, which is like the six squares and it looks like a sort of like a T. And then you'd wrap them all together and tape it up and it would actually become a cube. So when that bit of paper is flat, that's what would that's what would appear on your texture. And then you would drag them to Photoshop and then you would paint all of those six squares different colors. Uh, and then you assign that to your 3D model that's a cube. And then when you see it in the game, it wraps that texture around the cube. And then you see all of those different painted faces around the cube. So that's sort of how texture wrapping works and or, or UV um, wrapping because that's what the, they're called UVs. And um, yeah, it can get pretty complex and pretty crazy for like detailed items. Like you, I, I'm sure you guys can imagine what that process would look like for some of these more detailed like staffs and axes and things. It would be tons and tons of the, all these different little cut cut out shapes that I'd have to manually like color in, uh, and it would f it would fill up like a massive area just for one weapon. So the way I've done it is I've done like a cheat way where I've just made all these different sort of colored squares on the texture atlas, and then I just get I just select a whole bunch of faces of the model, and then I drag um, big parts of the model and just drag them onto that color. And what it does is it just means it turns all of the areas that one color and it's just a single flat color. There's no texture, there's no detail. It just turns everything that one color. But it makes it really, really quick and easy and efficient uh, to make all these different models. So like you can see me making here, like this mace, I just simply select a bunch of the faces on the outside of this mace, like the spiky bits. Uh, and then I go into the, I'm cleaning up a bunch of like gross topology here. Uh, and then I go into the UV map and I select them all and you can see all these little triangles here and I just drag them to the white and I make them lighter and then they're lighter. So all I'm doing is selecting faces and then dragging them across to different colors uh, just to turn them that color. And some of these colors have different effects. So what sort of make up the material? Because it's the one material. Um, there's, I've got some different versions of it for different things. Um, but what sort of makes up the material uh, that you see in the game is the albedo, which is the main sort of the colors. Uh, which is the main sort of texture and then we have our specular so this is all of the, the like the metallic so white means like 100% chrome and black uh, means it's not reflective at all like a like wood I guess you could say and then we have glow so some of these staffs have sort of glowing gems and things like that so you know black means doesn't glow the colors means it glows that color the brighter and the, the lighter the color is the more it glows uh, and it's pretty simple. It's just made up of those three things. But when I'm making models, I can drag any part of the model to any one of those squares and it will suddenly be that color. It will suddenly be chrome. It will suddenly be metal. It will suddenly glow. And it, they all share the exact same thing. So it makes it really, really quick and easy to make all these awesome models and have all these different sort of colors and effects and stuff. Uh, and it's just super simple to make. Uh, and, and you can see they all look pretty good. Uh, even if they were textured, even if I went in and sort of hand painted, um, you know, little specks of metal on the swords and the wood grain on the handles and all of the, you know, the fabric on the hand, on the fabric on the parts that you grab and um, all those sorts of details. You wouldn't even see it because uh, they're quite small. Like, you know, the character's pretty small in the game and he's holding a small weapon. You wouldn't even notice those details. So it's, it's perfect. And like you can see me with the hammer here, I'm sort of going through and trying to figure out what parts I want of the hammer to glow. And you can see just simply by make, moving those parts of the hammer to a different uh, color on that texture sheet, suddenly when it's in the game, it's, it glows and it looks awesome. And the rest of the hammer is this really cool metal design. So it's super, super simple, easy. Uh, and then if I want to change things about the texture sheet, I just change one little thing on the texture sheet and it affects everything because they're all uh, sort of assigned to that one texture. But yeah, that's something, If look, if you're really interested in 3D modeling or game design or you're currently starting to try and get into art or anything like that to make games, uh, yeah, look into Texture Atlas, um, texture packing uh, or making like a Sprite Atlas and, and draw calls and what they mean because it can make your game way quicker. It can make your life way easier as an artist because at the end of the day, if you're any sort of creative person, uh, to, to make use of your creativity, you really want to be spending all of your time doing uh, what you're good at 
And, you know, I'm good at uh, sort of, uh, look, I'm not great at 3D modeling, to be honest. I, there's, I'm not that good. <laughs> there's, there's lots of people that are way, way better than me. Uh, but I do what I can. Um, so I'm decent at 3D modeling. I'm, I'm good at texturing and, and doing sort of like effects and rendering and lighting and all that sort of stuff. Uh, and I'm, I really, really enjoy concept work and coming up with ideas and stuff like that. So I want to spend all my time doing that. I don't want to spend all my time mucking around doing all like the annoying technical stuff and saving files and dragging them and, and doing all, you know, just all the annoying stuff. You don't want to be doing that. So if you can make your life easier, I uh, always try to do that. <laughs> and yeah, so look, all this is in Maya. Uh, the programs I use for game design are, are Unity, Maya. Uh, I use or Maya, however you want to say it. Um, they're pretty much, Maya is pretty much an industry standard for 3D modeling. I went to university for game design. Um, I, I, have, yeah, I have a degree in game design, if you didn't know. And uh, we used Unity. Uh, and I would still use Unity even if I didn't do the, the degree. I, I love it. I've used Unreal and CryEngine and some other engines before, but I like Unity best. And uh, I've used other 3D modeling software. I've used Blender uh, and also, uh, what's it called? Um, Blender and there's another one. I forget the name of it. 3ds Max uh, is another one. I've used 3ds Max. But yeah, and I have Cinema 4D. And I, use, I use Cinema 4D for like uh, product rendering and like 3D animation stuff for for like advertising i do that sort of stuff on like a graphic design level but not for game not game design uh game designs all maya uh so yeah and then i use substance painter and photoshop for doing textures so the whole texture you can see me doing in this video it's all photoshop it's just like punching down squares and colors on photoshop uh for some of like the cliffs and the the trees and the wood and some of the stuff you can see in the game that's using substance painter uh substance painter is amazing i won't get too much into it in this video but Definitely worth checking it out if you don't know what Substance Painter is. It it's just awesome. It's a really really cool tool um, to texture three D stuff uh, or two D stuff as well. Uh, but yeah, look, I think the thing has made this uh, really fun. There was actually I don't know that it's it's pretty hard to sit down for twenty hours and just make three D models. Uh, so the only thing that really made me get through it is just the fact that. These were all like completely different theming and all different weapons. And that's something to think about too, is if you're ever working on projects um, where you're making a game or making 3D stuff, whatever. Uh, yeah, sometimes it, it can really pay to think about theming and try and make things different. And just, if I just made 50, you know, iron swords and like 50 iron weapons that are all just like slightly different looking iron weapons, uh, it would have sucked. Like it would have been, it would have not been fun at all to make these. But the reason why they're all themed differently is because the way Lens Island, my game, works is um, there is like a island, which is like the, the town, and there's all different traders and, and people on the town, and they sell you stuff that's related to them. Like, for example, there's a pirate merchant, so there's um, uh, a little, yeah, all those scimitars you can see on the screen right there to the left. Um, that the pirate merchant sells you them or like the nature stuff that i'm working on right now like this nature shield there's also like a wacky nature dude who also you can buy and trade like farming goods from um he has like nature based sort of weapons and stuff so there's all sorts of stuff that's themed in different ways and that made it way way more fun to work on all these things and in general if you're working on games or art or anything like that uh, it really pays to mix things up a little bit especially in game design if you're working on like a game project or anything like that uh, if you look, if I can give any sort of advice, it's try and mix things up from time to time, uh, because it can get pretty like mentally draining to just work on the same thing for a, the whole day or a whole week or even a whole month. Like there's been times in this game where I've spent like well over a month just working on like one sort of function, one type of functionality, functionality, like just working on the inventory system or just working on the building system and absolutely nothing else. And although it's really rewarding when you finish it. Uh, it, it just sucks. Like it's not. It's some. It, yeah. It gets more and more depressing uh, as you as you do it because it's just you're just doing the same thing. It just it can get a bit draining. So it really really pays. Um, it pays off and it helps if you just sort of change things from time to time. So typically I like to spend sort of a day max a week on like a certain thing and I'll sort of like jump in between tasks sometimes just to keep things fresh. Uh, it's good to stay on task and, and like get things done, um, but usually I'll I'll have sort of like a to do list for the week or a to do list for the fortnight, 
and I'll put like a few different things in that to-do list that aren't all the exact same thing. Like I won't just do all 3D modeling for a week and nothing else. I'll do like a little bit of programming and some level design and some lighting and then a bit of 3D modeling. So I can sort of jump in between all of them and uh, it just makes me more happy. At the same time, it also means you're building the game uh, like together. You're not just focusing all of your effort in one area and then moving on to the next. You can actually build it all up sort of and scale it together, uh, which tends to help you out in the long run. And, and this is really aimed at like people just making games in their bedroom and stuff. Uh, if you're a big team of game designers, you know, you've got professionals that do what they do best and they should keep doing that. Um, but that's one of the white reasons I love indie games is because I'm not just sitting at an office uh, making these 3D assets all day, every day, and that's all I do. Although it was a lot of fun to make this video, uh, I couldn't do this as my job. I just couldn't do it. I'd hate it. Um, but some people like it and some people are really, really good at that. And I, I totally respect, you know, the people that are masters of their field. It's unfortunately something, something that I'll just never be able to do uh, because I'm always trying to do all sorts of things at once and I just have never had the time to master anything. Uh, but for me personally, I just tend to work best when I do multiple things. And uh, yeah, look, I hope you enjoyed the video. Hopefully I didn't ramble too much. At least hopefully it was sort of uh, constructive ram rambling and you learnt uh, some stuff about sort of 3D modeling and texture unpacking and all that sort of stuff. Uh, but yeah, as always, I hope you have an amazing day, everybody. It's been Julian or Flow Graphics here, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.